Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Northridge Community Church. Uh, We're glad y'all are here this morning. If you're joining us online, we want to extend a special welcome to you. Thanks for tuning in with us this morning. And so we just ask wherever y'all are at, if you're here, if you're out there, we invite you to stand with us, and we're going to worship together this morning.
again. Uh, my name is Gary Schwinke, and I am the worship pastor here for Northridge Community Church, Irwin. And one of these days, I will remember on days that I'm doing the Welcome Not to Schedule an Upbeat song right before I have to do this, because now I can't breathe. So, <sighs> deep breath. Uh, anyway, uh, we're glad y'all are here this morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for choosing to spend your Sunday with us. Uh, if this is your first time at Northridge or first time joining us online, welcome. Uh, we would love to get a connection card from you guys, whether that's online or in person. Uh, you should have a card in your seat. Uh, we would love for you to fill that out and drop it in our offering boxes that are located back here in the back of the auditorium, and one is out in the hallway as well. Uh, and you can fill out as much or as little information as you want. It's just a way for us to connect with you. Uh, we're not going to bombard you with emails and junk and all kinds of stuff uh, that you have to just delete every single day when you get it. Uh, it's just a chance for us to say, hey, here's our information if you need us, and we'd love to be able just to connect with you on that level. So if you'd like to, make sure to drop those in there, or you can do that online. Uh, on our website, nrcc.church, uh, backslash connect, I believe, uh, you can go and you can do an online connection card as well. Uh, and actually, one of our core values here at Northridge is connecting with one another, correct? connecting one another so that we feel like family and that we can help each other, we can love one another, we can uh, help support one another throughout the week, not just on Sundays. Uh, there's a great opportunity coming up for that. There's opportunities th uh, for that throughout the week through things like community group, and uh, meeting here on Sundays. So if you'd like for information on that, you can mark that on your connection card as well, and someone from a group will get in touch with you about that. And there's actually a great opportunity coming up for our men here at Northridge Community Church or outside of Northridge Community Church coming up this Sunday, or I'm no, sorry, this Saturday, this coming Saturday. Uh, at uh, 8 a.m., we are going to have a men's breakfast here at 8 a.m., and so if you're a man, uh, you are invited to come join us. If you know friends who would like to come, please invite your friends to come. Uh, this is a chance for us to gather as men and talk about our important role uh, as men, not only within the church, but within our families and within our communities, and what it means to, first and foremost, abide in Christ, and also to abide and rely on one another for support, like I was talking about throughout the week. So if you're interested in that, what we're hoping to do from that is bring out a smaller uh, groups of men uh, throughout the week that are going to meet, three to four men that are going to meet throughout the week, uh, just to talk, uh, have coffee, have lunch talk about their week, uh, talk about some scripture, and be able to pray for one another. So if that's something you may be interested in, or if you just want some free breakfast, uh, come join us next Saturday at 8 a.m., and we'll be talking about that. Uh, one of our, another core value here at Northridge Community Church is giving generously. Uh, we believe that not only as individuals, but as a church. And your generosity allows us to be generous as a church. Uh, as a church, there are several organizations within our community that we support uh, whose ministries that we partner with, that we believe in, such as Family Promise and Isaiah 117 House that y'all have probably heard of. Uh, Isaiah 117 House actually sprang out from one of our campuses uh, within our Northridge network. Uh, the lady named Rhonda Paulson that y'all may have heard of uh, was a, is a member at our West Market campus. And so we're excited to be able to support that as a church, and your generosity allows us to do that. So thank you for the ways that you are generous. Uh, you can do that by uh, dropping an offering in the offering box back there or in the hallway, and you can also get that online or on our app. Uh, if you don't have the new Church Center app that we have, I highly recommend you get that on your phone. Uh, that allows you to do things like give, but also to connect uh, with uh, community groups and different people through that app. It's an awesome little app that we just uh, got rolling about a month ago. So if you haven't got that yet, make sure to check that out. Uh, Chris is going to be coming this morning here in just a few uh, to continue our Better Than Normal series. And so I'm going to take some time right now to pray for him. After I'm done praying, kindergarten through fifth grade kids, you are dismissed to go back into children's ministry. So you'll go out these big doors back here, and someone will meet you to take you to your class in the back. Sound good?
All right, let's pray, and then we'll get after it. God, thank you so much uh, just for a chance to come together this morning and worship. We thank you most of all for who you are and for all that you have done for us uh, and all that we hope and and pray that you will do, uh, not only in our church, but in our community. Uh, We thank you for the chance together this morning to worship uh, and to learn more about you and to support one another. And we just pray that we would do that not only today, but throughout the week as we leave this place. Uh, Lord, we just pray for Chris this morning as he comes. We pray that you would give him the words to say and that you would open our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear your voice this morning. It's in Jesus' name that we pray this thing. Amen. Well, good morning. Hey, it's great to see everybody this morning. Man, this is a great crowd today. This, I, I have missed this so much, and, and it's great to see everybody back and uh, see everybody here with us this morning as we continue in our Better Than Normal series. Uh, excited to be able to continue to bring this series to you. We've got a couple weeks left this week and next week, and then we'll start on another series. But I hope that you've got something from this series. I hope it's been beneficial. And um, for those folks online, thank you for joining us. Welcome. Great to have you all with us. And um, share and, and hopefully learn some things together and what God has for us today. So I've got a question for you though. How many of you have some bad habits? Okay. All right. All right. I got a list here. Let me add lying to, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, lying, we're going to add that as a bad habit we'll talk about today. Don't want to convict you or anything. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> listen, I got bad habits. All right. Maybe you've got bad habits. Uh, maybe you've had bad habits in the past and you've kicked them. And that's great, and God bless you, and we probably need to talk, because i got some habits I need to kick, as we'll talk about this morning. But bad habits tend to be a part of our lives, right? And bad habits tend to keep us in what we would consider a a normal life and and keep us from living the life that we were called to live to keep us from living a better than normal life. And that's what we want to strive, or that's the place that we want to strive to be. So whether we, whether we admit it or not, and I'm just kidding about the lying stuff, um, whether we want to admit it or not, we, we probably all have dealt with some bad habits. And maybe they're small, or maybe they've been large, and we're going to talk about that. But those are those things that, that we do or we say that we wish that we didn't do or say, right? And, and I know I'm, I'm super bad, so I'm, I probably, I've said this before, I should sit down and listen to this myself, because this was a hard one for me to go through, because I'm thinking about some of the things that I deal with and the habits in my life. And, and the thing about bad habits is sometimes they're hard to break, right? I mean, that's why they're called bad habits. I mean, they're hard to break. And, and sometimes they're really hard to break. Sometimes we deal with things um, that they are just constant, you know, I guess a, a thorn in our side, so to speak, but they are constant battles that we have, and they are extremely hard to break. And there's lots of different bad habits. I mean, some people might be prone to to being lazy, right? Maybe a little bit lazy. I know I I, I read or saw an article the other day about with the pandemic and the shutdowns and everything that's been going on. You know, sometimes a lot of people have gotten into this mode of of just losing motivation and not, you know, procrastinating things. Procrastinating is a bad habit. And it was talking about how you break through that habit, right? That's something that that people have developed. Um, Maybe it's a habit like, you know, gossip. Things like that. Maybe we like to gossip and talk, and that becomes a habit that we get into, and it's hard to break that habit. Um, and, and so those are, those are maybe what, I mean, I wouldn't call them all small issues, but, but then it, it can range all the way to larger issues, you know, and, and, and like uh, abusing substances and things like that. Those are issues that become habits that are very difficult to deal with, right? I mean, I have issues. Like, I have, I, have, I mean, I got issues, but I got bad habits. You know, and like, for instance, like biting my nails. I am so bad at that. It, I mean, how many emails do that? Drives people crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do it. My hands look terrible. Um, and they feel like sandpaper because they're just dry. But, but I bite my fingernails all the time. And that's a little one, but it's something I would love to be able to break, but it's something I do. Another bad habit that I have, just in the interest of full disclosure here, is, you know, I tend to overeat. Right? I mean, that's, I mean, obviously you can look at me and tell that, but I mean, I tend to overeat. And that's something that I've really tried to, that I've struggled with and still struggle with in my life a lot. And it's a habit. And it's something that frustrates us, frustrates me a lot. And maybe you share that journey as well. So I borrowed a list just to give us some, some ideas, some references. I borrowed a list from Chris Miller, who's talking about 
bad habits today too over at the, the West Market campus. And he kind of gave us a list of some bad habits that people have. And it really, I thought it was a thought provoking list. So I, I think I got it up on the slides today. Yeah. So I wanted to share these with you and, and just kind of think about them. Um, I think I did. I think I messed one up. Oh, no, I got that right. So postponing your goals, right? I sort of messed that slide up, so I apologize. Postponing your goals, living a, a mediocre life, self-sabotaging. How many of us have been into that? We get into something and we feel like it's good and then we kind of sabotage ourselves a little bit, right? Uh, running from your problems, right? Worrying about your flaws. You ever think about worrying as a habit? I mean, it, it, it is. It's, we're going to talk about worry a little bit in, in a piece of scripture later. Trying to control everything. Guilty as charged. I mean, I'm a control freak. I mean, that's a, that's a habit that we get into. Blaming others. Trying to be something that we're not. Living in the past or living in the future. Right? How many times do we live in our past and we think, but then also, how many times do we, we get in this habit of just thinking about what could be, what should be, what might be, and we, and we tend to forget about where we are here today. Right? Living in the present. And these are all areas of our lives that we could consider as habits and things that, that are holding us back, quite frankly, from living a better than normal life. And whatever it is, whatever habit it is, here's the thing about our habits. A lot of times we've probably become comfortable with those habits. We've become comfortable in those habits and that makes it hard to break or sometimes we decide we don't even really want to break them because we like that comfort. But as we've talked over the last few weeks, and this is, a, this is a phrase that I have used each week, I think, in this series, comfort does not equate to healthy, does it? Being comfortable in our lives and comfortable with what we're doing doesn't always equate to being healthy, right? So we've just become comfortable in some of these habits. Flip side of that is, many times we get to a place and we think that the habits are too difficult to overcome. We think that we just can't overcome the habits that we have and we've just given up, and we quit trying. We know they're a bad habit. We know they're holding us back, but then we just decide that we can't break those habits. So we deal with either the, the side of comfort or with the frustration and, and, and the despair and the giving up and not being able to break them. But here's the thing. I'll talk about comfort for a second. I would suggest to us that our habits many times give us, don't give us comfort, but they actually give us quite the opposite of comfort. Right? They give us quite the opposite of comfort because many times we've tried to break them and it's come to that, that frustration, but we struggle with our habits. And when we think about that, when we think about the struggle that we have with our habits beyond some of the bigger habits that, that, that may cause you know, medical, physical issues, but think about the anxiety, the frustration in your habits. You know these things. I mean, we think we're comfortable in doing something. Like, I'll just use my own example. I eat too much. And I think there's comfort in that, but then it frustrates me and it makes me mad at myself when I've done it, right? And that's just a personal example for myself. And I, and I use that just to maybe help you guys understand that I deal with the same things that I'm talking about. But it's pain, it's anxiety, depression that comes from dealing with habits and not being able to pray. So when we think that we're getting, that we're comfortable, it's really quite the opposite. Like I said, comfort does not always equal being healthy. So, so we have, I mean, I mean, think about it. how many times have you tried, and if you've had a bad habit, how many times have you tried to break a bad habit and then got knocked down and got frustrated? How many times has that caused some anxiousness in your life? But here's the thing. Today I'm going to give you some good news. We got some good news, right? We, we really, we, we look at this and we, don't, we understand we don't have to stay normal in this area of our life because normal isn't working for us. Normal isn't working. We don't have to stay normal. That's the good news that we're going to talk about today. You don't have to give in. You don't have to be controlled by, or you don't have to be defined by the habits, the bad habits that we see in our lives. Change is possible. Change is possible. Better than normal can happen. It truly can. So why has change so challenging? Let's talk about that for a second. Um, we're going to be in Galatians 5 for a few minutes today. If you've got your Bibles or electronic devices, it'll be here on the screen. If you're watching with us at home, if you've got a Bible, we'd love for you to, to grab that. But in Galatians 5, the Apostle Paul addresses this. Okay, And we're going to be in chapter, chapter 5, starting at verse 16. He actually addresses this. And he talks about um, uh, the idea of us living by following the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, 
And because, because we want to live by the Spirit, because here's the thing. What we want in life is typically against the Spirit. And here comes the normal piece. What the world hits us, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but what the world hits us with and tells us is normal many times keeps us from walking by the Holy Spirit. Okay? And, and so, and so he, what he tells us is living by the Spirit is, is difficult because what we want is against the Spirit. So let's jump in at verse 16. See what he says here. He says this, So I say, walk by the Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and then listen to this, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. So here he is. He's setting out. You want to know why it's so hard to break these habits? Why it's so hard to make change in our lives? Because we, we have this battle going on inside of us. We want the desires of the flesh. We want all these things, but the Spirit calls us to live in a different way. He finishes up. He says, they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. Basically, we, what we know to be right and what we know to be wrong are pretty much at war inside of our soul, inside of our minds. We're going to talk a lot about our mind today and the renewing of our minds. But what we want and what we know is right and what we want are constantly at war within us. So when we try to do the right thing, there's literally a war going on inside of our minds, inside of our hearts, inside of our souls. There's literally a war that prevents us many times from doing the things that we want to do or that we know is right to do. We could also say that in context of this series, we could also say that normal is at war with better than normal. Right? Would you, would you agree with me on that? Normal is at war with better than normal. What we get hit with, what we get shown, I'm going to go through a list here in just a second, but what we, get, what we see in the world, what is, what is thrown at us all the time through the media and just through culture and society, the normal is at war with better than normal. And many times, unfortunately for many people, normal is winning that war. There are, there's definitely some differences between normal and better than normal in relation to bad habits. So, so let me give you some ideas just to think about some of these. And some, we're going to talk about some of these through Scripture today. The first one is this. Normal conforms to the world, but better than normal renews the mind. And you say, well, what does that mean, renew the mind? We're going to talk about that. We're going to look at some Scripture in a few minutes to talk about how do we renew our minds in terms of dealing with normal versus normal in our, in our bad habits. Another one, normal gives in to temptation, but better than normal trusts God for a way out. I'm going to share a piece of scripture with you in a little while about, about being tempted and about how we're tempted and know we're, we're, there's, we're not going to be tempted beyond what we can bear because God is there with us, right? We're going to talk about that in a minute. Normal gratifies fleshly desires, but better than normal walks by God's spirit. Normal gives in to worry. Many of you like me are a worrier, but better than normal prays for strength and guidance. Normal allows evil to win, but better than normal submits to God and specifically to God's will in our lives. Normal ignores sin, but better than normal repents and receives forgiveness. So we have this contrast, this war. That's the war that's going on in our life. The war between normal and better than normal. The war between our, our desire to live with the Spirit and our fleshly desire. That's going on inside of us every day, every minute of every day of our lives. And one of the most difficult things about our bad habits and about breaking them specifically is we focus on beating the bad habit, right? We focus on just simply beating the bad habit, and many times it's just hard to do that. But what I would suggest to us today is that if we strive to live a healthy life, and when I say healthy, I'm talking about living by the Spirit of God. Living within the Holy Spirit. When we strive to live a life by the Holy Spirit, many of the bad habits that we've adopted will actually fall away. Many of them will actually fall away. Let me give you this. If you, if you take notes, I'd love for you to write this down or take a picture of it. I think it's up on this, the next slide. I hope I put this in the slide. But this statement here, because this means a lot to me. What we focus on is what will grow stronger in our lives. Think about that for a second. What we focus on is what will grow stronger in our lives. Where we put our mind, where we put our thoughts, where we put our ideas, that's what will grow stronger in our lives. It will. And I think you, and, 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 it, and I hope you would agree with me on that. Maybe you've seen that in your life at some point. But what we focus on will grow stronger in our lives. So how do we deal with that? How do we work with that? How do we, how do we you know, what, how do we change our focus. What should we be focusing on? Well, Paul explains that in the next few verses, following the ones that we just read, starting at verse 18. He says this, but if, but if you are led by the Spirit, 
You are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. And then he gives us this big long list. Sexual immorality, idolatry, hatred, fits of rage, selfish ambition, drunkenness. He goes through all this list. And then he says this. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But then there's this last part. Then there's this last part. He says this. But the fruit of the Spirit, and maybe you've heard this, and if you haven't heard this, or maybe you're here today and you're just not sure about Jesus, and maybe you're watching and you see this down the road and you're just not sure about who this Jesus is, you're not sure about who God, you're not sure about what do you mean the Holy Spirit and what, what comes from that. The fruits of the Spirit, this is, I would love for you to just take time and read these verses right here to understand what it is that God gives us through His Spirit. And here's the fruit of the Spirit that He gives us. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So those are the fruits of the Spirit. I want to focus on that last one, okay? That last one, that that self-control. Now, here's the thing about self-control. Now, we have a definition of our minds of what we think self-control is. And many times for us, it is an outward Act. It is us trying to control ourselves. We're setting up filters in our body to control our behaviors, to control our actions. And I would suggest that's not what the real definition of self-control is in terms of, in terms of how we live through the Spirit. How is it a fruit of the Spirit? How is self-control a fruit of the Spirit? You see, the thing about it is God wants you to learn control, to control your life under the control of His Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. He wants us to learn to control our lives under the control of His Holy Spirit. We think... That, it's some, that self-control is something that we have to do, that we control. Now, we do have a part in it. We'll talk about that in a second. But ultimately, we want to live by the Spirit. Let me give you this definition of self-control when we say, what is self-control? Self-control is the inward rule or regulation of every area of your life, listen to this, under the ultimate authority and control of God's Spirit in line with His Word. When we strive to live by God's word, that, in, that enables us to have that self-control that is the fruit of the Spirit. Okay? By definition, self-control means overruling your emotions because of a higher goal. Overruling our emotions, because our emotions lead us, right? Many times our emotions lead us. But if, if we're living by the Spirit, that self-control that comes from the fruit of the Spirit allows us to control those emotions because we're, we're living for a higher goal. Well, what is that Higher goal. Well, that higher goal is we want to please and honor God. Right? If that's our goal, if that's where we're headed, if that's what we're working toward, if we want to please and honor God, then we can go against our feelings that we have at the moment, many times. That's what, if that's our goal, if that's what we're working toward. So that's what self-control is. What is self what is what is self-control not? Well, it's not trying harder. I mean, if, if, we could, if we just try, it's a lot of times we just think, oh, I can break that habit if I just try harder. And that's not always the case. In fact, most of the time it's not the case. It's not the case of just, just trying harder. You know, self-control operates under spirit control. There's a paradox there, but go back to Galatians 15, uh, 5, verse 16, the first verse that we read. To be, controlled, to be spirit-controlled results in being self-controlled. As Paul said, as we walk... By the Spirit, He produces in us an ability to control every area of our lives in line with His purpose for our lives. And you think about, well, you know, how does my bad habit align with this? But if, I'm, if my focus is living for God's purpose, then I'm able to kind of to push a lot of these other things to the side a little bit. Now, one of the things, too, and, and you've got to kind of understand, there's, a little, there's another little paradox here. Um, there, there is an implication. There is active responsibility on our part, okay? It's not always just, you've heard that phrase, you know, just let go and let God, right? And, that, and that's true. Like, we want to let go and let God, but, but, but there is active responsibility on our part. Right? If we, we want, there is striving, there is working. Uh, um, um, Paul writes this, For this purpose, in, in, in um, Colossians, he says this, For this purpose also I labor. He says, I labor. Striving, okay, Paul says striving, but what is he striving He's striving according to his, God's power, which mightily works within me. He's striving for God's purpose, to live the life that God has called him to live. So there is 
active responsibility on our part. Our part is we want to strive to live a godly life. We want to strive to live by the Spirit. But we have His strength within us. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. So let's step back for just a second. We talk about overcoming bad habits and and living by the Spirit. And and what does that, you know, how do we do that? What does that mean? And, And we want to continually renew our minds by thinking about things from above. Thinking about things from God. Well, what is that? What does this renewing our mind mean? Uh, if you want to flip over to Philippians for me, Philippians 4. There's a verse that's somewhat kind of popular. You may have heard this before. And it talks about what we think about, what we focus on. How do we renew our minds in God? Well, we focus on the things that are from God. So let, let's read. It's verses 6 through 8. It says this. Uh, do not be anxious. We talked about that, worrying. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving... Present your requests to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, listen to this, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. Right? If, if, we're, if we're seeking God, He's going to guard our hearts and our minds. But then it goes on to say this. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. Things that are true, that are honorable, that are right, that are pure, that are beautiful, that are respected. Our actions won't change until our minds do. Our actions won't change until our minds do. And how do we change our minds? What are we focusing on? As I said earlier, what we focus on is what will grow stronger in our lives. So if we focus on God, if we focus on the Scripture, if we focus on what is true and right and honorable and pure, then that will change our minds. That's how we renew our minds. When we focus on these things, our minds and our spirits are renewed. Right? But how hard is that in the world today? I mean, how hard is that in this world today? How many times we, we're just bombarded with negativity? We're bombarded. It's like, for instance, like with the eating thing, right? Like, I would love to stop overeating, but every time I drive into Irwin, I see that aggravating McDonald's billboard, and I want a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, in a simple way, I mean, really, right? Or, or I get up, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to do well with eating today, and then guess what? I see a commercial about a, something I'd love to eat, right? So we're constantly bombarded. Now, that's a simple example. So you just, just bear with me. That's my example, but just bear with me on that. But we're bombarded with all these things from the world that, that just constantly hit us. But in Romans, we're told this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. How? By the renewing of our mind. How do we renew our minds? By thinking about the things from God. By thinking about what is true and pure and honorable. By thinking about what God's will is in our lives. By reading the scripture to find what God's will is in our lives. That's how we renew our mind. And then he finishes and says this, Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's how we renew our minds. What are we thinking about? What are we focusing on? What is it that we're seeing? Right? Our bottom line is this, and it's the same one I've used every week, not just because I'm lazy, just because I think it's a good bottom line, but it's the same one we used every week. As followers of Jesus, we are called to live differently. But to live differently, we have to focus on different things. To live differently, we have to think differently. As we said, our, mind, our actions won't change until our minds do. And what we're thinking about. And what we're focusing on. But we try and we try and we just, we just can't break through, right? I mean, I've tried to break different habits and times in my life so many times I can't even count them. Right? I mean, I truly have. And then we get down and we get frustrated and then, and then we want to give up. And to be honest with you, many times we do. And let me kind of take a, take a sidestep for just a second and talk about this. Right? Um, there are a lot of bad habits that folks have that require help. Okay? There are. There are, there are people, and I believe that God puts people in our lives. He puts people here on earth to help us and to walk with us. And, the, and so... You know, sometimes we think about it simplistic. Yeah, I can do this and I can do this. But many times we need, I'm going to talk about this again at the end. But many times we need, times we need help. Many times we need professional help. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. 
I think God has put these people in our, in, in our lives and in, in place to help us with things. But ultimately, what we focus on, where we focus our lives, where we renew our mind in, that's where we start. But so many times we quit. So many times we settle for normal when we were made for so much more, when we were made for better than normal. God made us. He made all of us. He made us for better than normal. And, and, and the temptations are hard. But here's some hope for us. I mentioned this a little while ago. In 1 Corinthians 10, we read this. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. Let me read that again. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. We have this assurance that God is with us. He gives us the means and he gives us the strength to break our bad habits by focusing on his will and focusing on his strength. If you're constantly relying on your strength, you're going to fail. We think self-control comes from within us, don't we? We think that's where self-control is. We think that that's how we're going to do it, and that's where we get beat. That's where we get beat. Because what we're doing is we're just trying to control ex external behaviors. We're not working on the internal in our lives. We want to control those behaviors and what people see on the outside. But it's actually a heart issue. Good and evil, the, the thoughts that we have, they flow from our hearts. In Mark 7, we read, that we read this, this description of all the evil thoughts and all these actions that come from our heart. Right? But the control of the Holy Spirit extends to the heart level. The control of the Holy Spirit extends to our hearts, allowing us to deal with those temptations before they ever go any farther. Not always perfect. Sometimes they get through, but that's okay. We continue to push our faith and our focus on Christ. So there's a big difference between self-control and self-will. Self-will is, is us trying to do things on the external, whereas self-control is actually a fruit of the Spirit. Right? And the difference between a self-controlled person is they're submitting themselves to God's will as revealed in his word. The self-willed person is actually trying to do it for their own selfish desires and their own actions, and they're not relying on God. God's strong enough for you to rely on it, right? He has the strength, he has the power, and he's given it to us. Because God has given us new life in Christ, he has also given us his Holy Spirit to indwell us. His Holy Spirit indwells us. We have both the responsibility and the ability to yield our self-will to His revealed will. Now, it's hard, right? It's hard. And if we just think about fighting with our tools, with, with, the, with the weapons that we have individually, we're probably going to come up short. But we don't have to rely on that. In 2 Corinthians 10, we read this. We are humans, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to do what? To knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We don't have to rely on our weapons. We have God's strength. We have His weapons at our disposal. When God changes my mind, when I focus on God and when God changes my mind, my habits change. Right? We don't have to use our strength or our weapons. God has given us the Holy Spirit. He has given us His Word. And He has given us His Son to defeat the battles that rage within us. So, I've got some next steps for you uh, that I'd love for you to, to consider as, as the band comes back up and prepares to close us out in worship. Um, there are really more questions than anything. I think I got them uh, up, on this, up in this slide. But they're really they're, they're questions more than anything for us to consider. The first one is this. What are the bad habits that you continue to struggle with? What are the bad habits that you continue to struggle with? Now, this, I mean, this requires some self-reflection, and, and, and let's, just, let's just be real. It requires some honesty with ourselves, okay? It requires some honesty with ourselves. What are the bad habits that you continue to struggle with? Are there actions you do or words you say that are normal 
but not beneficial. Let me say that again. Normal, again, we're striving for better than normal. Words and actions that are normal, but not beneficial. Again, we've got to be honest with ourselves. And, and, and maybe you're here today, and, and listen, I'm not saying anybody, no, nobody has bad, somebody, everybody's got a bad habit, maybe. Maybe you don't. Maybe you feel good about where you're at, and that's great. But I bet you know somebody that has a bad habit. And maybe you can take this and speak to them. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Maybe you can speak to them a little bit about that and help them and in, in, in help direct them toward God's will. But the last one is this. If you aren't sure what needs to go, if you don't know what needs to go on, ask God to reveal what needs to change so that you can begin living a life that is better than normal. And the last one I want to mention, I didn't put this up here, and I should have put this up here, but I thought about it honestly after I did the, the presentation. We have God to lean on. But there are other people here that you can lean on to. I want to encourage you. You know, I've shared with you guys, like, I got a bad habit. I eat too much, right? That's a habit. That's a bad habit. And sometimes it's hard. It's hard to step out, right, and share your bad habits. And I'm not saying that, that, that you know, you're ready for that right now. But if that's a next step, don't think that you have to go through this alone. You know, talk to one of us. Talk to somebody that you trust in your community. Find a good godly mentor, somebody that you can walk with, somebody that you can share with. And I would encourage you that that's a big next step for us to talk. Gary talked about one of our values uh, being connecting with one another. Well, we want to connect with you in that way. But too many times we get into this thing and we try to beat those bad habits. And even, even, even sometimes we pray and we say, oh, God, I'm going to trust you. But then we never step out and share and get someone to walk with us in this. You know, the, the overall mission of our church is to, is to, to help lead people in a growing relationship with Christ. Right? And all of us have a ministry. All of us have that opportunity. So if you need somebody to talk to, if you need somebody to walk with you in that, let us know. Let us know. We'll help connect you with somebody. If it's not us, we'll find somebody and we'll connect you with. But I just want to encourage you to reach out and build to, begin to build that relationship with Christ at the center. Because he puts people in our lives for a reason. He puts people in our lives to help us and to walk with us. So I just want to encourage you to do that. Let's pray. God, thank you for this time together. Thank you uh, just for uh, just your amazing word. Uh, Lord, we know it's, it's so hard, uh, the struggles that, that we deal with, the, the trials that we go through and, and the habits that we have. And we get, we get stuck in this normal rut, Lord. And we understand that. And I would just pray that, if, that whoever's hearing this, if it's people here, if it's people online, that, that if there is a habit, if there is something that they are truly struggling with, and it's causing that pain and that anxiety and that depression and all those issues, Lord, that I would just pray that you would give them the strength to, to begin to renew their mind on you, to focus on you, but then to reach out. Reach out to somebody. Let, let's let somebody walk with them and, and walk in that relationship with you, with them. And that's hard. That's so hard because, God, we think that we have to put on this facade that like we're perfect and we've got it all together. And the truth is, we don't. We're all broken. We're all sinful. But God, we're all saved by your grace. You're saved by the, the gift of your son and, and the sacrifice that he made. And so, Lord, we praise you for that. And I just ask that you would help those who are dealing with certain issues, whatever it may be. I don't know what the issues are. You do. I don't. Whatever those issues are, I would just pray that you would work inside of our hearts, work inside of our minds to help us, help us begin to focus on renewing our minds in you, in your word. Just dive into the scripture and find your will. But then I would also pray that you would give us, anyone in that situation, the courage to step out and say, hey, I'd love to talk with you about this and talk with you about my relationship with Christ. We pray these things in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand with us as we close together with some worship this morning.
more of you. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need. Take everything. If more, if more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need. Take everything. Yeah, we just pray that that would be the prayer of our hearts this morning. And as we pray those words, I just pray that you would help, help us to see the power behind those words and the seriousness behind those words. And God, if we want to be more like you, then we first have to lay down ourselves. And God, that can be such an empowering thing because when we realize that we're weak, the word tells us that is when we're made strong. So we just pray that if there's anyone here, we pray for all of us because we all know that we have something in our life that we're not real happy about, that we're not satisfied with. We just pray that we would have the courage to turn those things over to you and to realize our great need for you in all of these things, in every part of our life, but especially the parts where we struggle. We pray that you would help us to get away from this mentality of having to do it all ourselves and fix it all ourselves and control everything ourselves. And we'll turn it over to you because Lord, you're in control anyway. We just pray that you would help us to believe that, help us to know that, and help us to live that way. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the opportunity to worship together, to lift up your name. We pray that's what has been done here. We pray that we would do that as we leave this place today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray these things. Amen. We just want to thank you all once again uh, for choosing to spend your Sunday with us uh, here at Northridge. We very much believe in next steps. And so as Chris talked about earlier, there are next steps that all of us can be taking in our relationship with Jesus. No matter if we've been following Jesus for two minutes, 50 years, or maybe you don't know Jesus at all, uh, there are always next steps that we all can take because none of us have it all together. None of us, none of us have arrived. And so we all need to take those next steps. So I just encourage you, whatever that next step is for you, uh, maybe that's like Chris was talking, is finding someone that you can have some accountability with or someone that you can just be a, uh, someone that can be a mentor to you and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me? Can you pray for me? Uh, that's one of the awesome things that we hope to see come out of this Abide Men's Group that's coming up this Saturday is a chance for, for men and people to get together and just share each other's burdens and to pray for one another and to love one another and to realize that you have stuff just like I have stuff. We all have things going on in our lives that we need help with, whether we want to admit it or not. So I just encourage you, if you're a man here today, I know that as men, we struggle with that specifically. I think more than, more than anyone, we struggle with being, being vulnerable with anyone, being transparent with anyone. So just encourage you, if that's you, uh, take that next step. Sign up for that Abide Men's Breakfast. Come out and see us next Saturday, and let's connect together so we can all grow together in our relationship with Jesus. Thank you all so much for being with us today. You're dismissed, and hopefully we'll see you next week.